back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about Hyperledger Fabric key concepts. See, we have seen what is Hyperledger Fabric, then we were able to install it on the machine and we have also ran the first, not the first network, but the test network. It was working, right? And then we were happy. But the thing is, it's important for us to understand the basic concepts, right? Because see, when you build a network and then if you want to configure something, what, how do you know that what you're doing? Uh, so in this video, let's try to understand the key concept. Now, first of all, it will not be one video, it will be a series of videos. And this is what I'm going to explain. So look at the network. Now, this is a network taken from the official documentation. You can just go to their uh, docs and then this is what you will find there. But then in this video, let's try to break it down one by one and we'll understand the entire diagram here. So this is what we want to understand, right? Uh, so in the upcoming slides, we will break it down. We'll go one by one. But then let's have an overall look what it looks like. See, the thing is, when you want to build a private blockchain network, of course, you need to have a, uh, you need to have organizations who want to communicate. And that's the entire purpose here, right? Uh, so we are trying to solve the issues in different industries. So it's not specific to one kind of industry. It can be a supply chain. It can be health industry. It can be a finance industry, right? Now in this, you will be having multiple organizations who are dealing with each other. And that's the main purpose, right? Now you don't want to use blockchain for one particular organization because if one organization is using only one database, <laughs> let's continue with that. Uh, so how, blockchain make much more sense when you have multiple organization and they want to have they want to come to a consensus regarding one type of data or the similar kind of data, not similar, same kind of data. So the thing is, here we'll be having multiple organizations who want to deal with each other and they also want to achieve privacy. Example, let's say if you have, let's say four organizations and then these four organizations or we can say companies and if they want to have a common blockchain, they will be storing their data in this blockchain and they also want privacy. Let's say there are two companies, they don't want to share their transactions with the other companies. Maybe it can be, we can take an example here of Apple, let's say. So whenever you make an iPhone, Apple is not building all the components by themselves. Of course, right? They are importing these components from different companies. Uh, maybe let's, let's for the examples, I don't exactly know from where Apple got all those uh, things. Uh, maybe we can, we can talk about the screen. Maybe Apple is taking this screen from Samsung. Maybe Apple is taking their CPU from uh, from Qualcomm. I'm not sure. Maybe Apple is making their own CPUs, if I'm not wrong. Uh, then we have, yeah, for, for laptops, they are doing it, but let's say Qualcomm. Uh, and then for their motherboard is coming from Gigabyte and their, uh, their battery is coming from some other, some other company. So let's say we have this four company where when Apple is buying a screen from Samsung, Gigabyte don't want to know that, right? I mean, why Apple and Samsung want to sh share the price of their display to Gigabyte? So in this, of course, they want to have a common blockchain, but they want to also work separately. Now, if you look at here, this is where we want to design a network. So we'll be having a network, we'll be having mul multiple organizations. So if you look at this diagram, we have R1, R2, R3, and R4. They are the four organizations we have. And then we have two channels here. We can see we have C1 channel, we have C2 channel. It will make much more sense when we go one by one. We have O4 here, which is an order appear. Uh, now just to understand what order appear does is, see, uh, you will be having multiple nodes, right? And we have talked about it. So whenever you have a blockchain, you will be having multiple nodes in the network. Now each node is responsible to save the blockchain or the database we can say, or maybe uh, we can say ledger. Uh, so let's say each uh, each node is responsible to store the data. Now it can be a world state, it, it, it can be uh, the entire blockchain. Maybe we can say ledger in general. Uh, so in this example, we have P1, P2, they are the nodes. P3 is also a node. Now L1, L2, they are the ledgers, right? Now this ledger will be available, will be having some data and then we have P1, P2 as a nodes, right? Now whenever you have a new block, Right? Whenever, whenever you have a new block of data, and of course we have multiple nodes, right? What will be the sequence of a block? Let's say in, in, in a second you got three blocks generated. What is the sequence of those blocks which getting added to the blockchain? Who will decide that? Uh, that will be decided by O4, which um, basically order order appear. But then in this example, we'll be using some more features of order appear. Order appear is also responsible to initiate the network. Right, of course, if you want to be a part of this network, network has to be there, right? So who will start it? 
and that's the job of order of peer. But of course, order of peer is not a magician, right? How would order of peer knows what is a network configuration, how many nodes will be there, how many organizations will be there? We need to do some configuration. Now, to understand that, let's start with the first one. So what we'll do is, let's make it blank and let's start from scratch. Basically, we have some labels here, right? So whatever labels we are going to use, we have R1, R2, and R3, and R4, they are, they are the organizations. Uh, we have network configuration, we have CS. Now, why do we need CS is, okay, we'll talk about it in, in some time. Then we have order peer, we have consortiums, uh, channels, channel configuration, peer, ledger, and smart contracts. So let's see them one by one. Step one, we need a network. So let's say this is a network, and we'll name this network as N. Okay. Of course, we can have any name, but in general, when you, when you say network, we get N always. Now, in this network, of course, we need to have organizations, right? But then when you have this for organization, someone will be taking the initiative, right? They will be saying, hey, you know, let me just uh, design the network for you. In this case, let's say it is R4. Now, R4 can be any organization, but let's say it can be R1, R2. Let's say R4 says, hey, let me create a network. So R4 will say, okay, I'm there, and now let me create a network. But then who exactly creates a network, right? It's or instantiate the network is order peer. But then we have talked about it, order peer is not a magician to create a network by itself. Uh, so it will need some configuration, right? Some file where it where you have written all the things, you know, this is this is the number of organizations we have, uh, this is our this is the number of nodes we have, the channels, everything. So uh, we need to we need to have a configuration. So let's do that. So R4 will create a configuration which is NC4, which is the network configuration. Okay, uh, but then as I mentioned before, just by having a file will not be useful to instantiate a network. We need order up here. So let's take O4. Now why we are going for this convention of four is because since R4 has taken the responsibility of creating a network. So let's make it as O4. Of course, you can have any name, doesn't matter. But this makes much more sense, right? Now what next? Of course, O4 will be using this NC4 to instantiate the network. But this in this network, we need some more components, right? So the thing is, whenever you have a component in the network, right, it has to be authorized. Who will do that? See, the thing is, it's very important. Now, when we say it's a, it's a permission blockchain where you have private members, all the members are well known. How do you know? How do you know a particular member? Do you have to show your iCard? Of course, right? We need to have some authority. And for that, we will be having certificate authorities. Now, we can, in short, we can say CA. Uh, so, for different organizations, we can have different, with different CAs, or maybe we can have all the uh, organizations sharing the same CA, that's your choice. But uh, typically, when you have a network, multi different organizations will be having different CAs for them. In this case, let's say for NC4, let's say we have CA4, which is your, uh, which is your certificate authority. Okay, now once you have your CA, and once you've got the component, let's say this is a big network. Of course, in this example, we are going for a small network. But what if, NC, uh, what if R4 want to share its responsibility with someone else. Maybe R1 will show up and say, hey, you know, uh, uh, hey, R4, let me help you. Let me help you to create this network or to admin, admin, uh, admin this network. Now, in this case, we can also have R1 in the, in, the, in the configuration. So they both are admins now and they both have the rights to the network. They can change something, uh, whatever they feel or whatever they like. And uh, that's how we can do it. Now, once we got the network, once we got the network instantiated, so right, we got the network instantiated by the O4. Now it will be administrated by R1 and R4. We got CA4 to you know to admin the uh, the components. Of course, we also need CA1 who will do the administration for R1, but we'll add it in some time. But then, is it enough? Of course not, right? You will not be using a network without the nodes. The actual communication, the actual blocks, will be created by the nodes or by the organizations who will be doing some transactions. Looking at R1 and R4, they are just here for the network configuration. And in this example, R4 don't even want to do any transaction, any communication on the network. It's just there to manage the network. Maybe we can use R1, R2, R3 for the communication, for the blocks, but let's keep R4 for the configuration. 
not compulsion of course you can still use r4 it can be a part of the consortium to do transactions but that we'll see in the upcoming videos